Today's Mass Readings and Gospel Reflection November 10, 2022 Thursday Memorial of St. Leo the Great, Pope and Doctor of the Church The 32nd Week in Ordinary Time We bless your name, O Lord, for sending your own incarnate Son to become part of a family, so that, as he lived its life, he would experience its worries and its joys. We ask you, Lord, to protect and watch over this family, so that in the strength of your grace its members may enjoy prosperity, possess the priceless gift of your peace, and, as the church alive in the home, bear witness in this world to your glory. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Leo I, Pope and Doctor of the Church, ruled from the year 440 to 461. He is renamed the Great and ranks among the most illustrious sovereigns that ever sat on the throne of St. Peter. Of his life, we know little. With him the man seems to disappear before the Pope. He saw most clearly that one of his greatest tasks was to vindicate the primacy of the Roman bishop, St. Peter's successor, and to raise the prestige of the Holy See before the entire world. Hardly any pope in history has occupied a like position in the ecclesiastical and political world. As a writer, too, his name is famous. His sermons, which occur frequently in the Divine Office, belong to the finest and most profound in patristic literature. The Council of Chalcedon was held under his direction in the year 451. The breviary tells us Leo I, an Etruscan, ruled the church at the time when Attila, king of the Huns, who was called the Scourge of God, invaded Italy. After a siege of three years, he took, sacked and burned Aquileia, and then hurried on toward Rome. Inflamed with anger, his troops were already preparing to cross the Po, at the point where it is joined by the Mincio. Here Attila was stopped by Leo in the year 452. With God-given eloquence, the Pope persuaded him to turn back, and when the Hun was asked by his servants why, contrary to custom, he had so meekly yielded to the entreaties of a Roman bishop, he answered that he had been alarmed by a figure dressed like a priest that stood at Leo's side. This individual was holding a drawn sword and acted as if he would kill him if he advanced farther. As a result Attila retreated to Pannonia. Meanwhile, Leo returned to Rome, and was received with universal rejoicing. Some time later, the Vandal Genseric entered the city, and again Leo, by the power of his eloquence and the authority of his holy life, persuaded him to desist from atrocity and slaughter in the year 455. Leo was also active in matters liturgical. The so-called Leonine Sacramentary, a compendium of missal prayers contains many of his compositions. Some liturgists give him credit for the beautiful offices of Advent. First reading. A reading from the letter to Philemon. Philemon verse 7 to 20. Beloved I have experienced much joy and encouragement from your love, because the hearts of the holy ones have been refreshed by you, brother. Therefore, although I have the full right in Christ to order you to do what is proper, I rather urge you out of love, being as I am, Paul, an old man, and now also a prisoner for Christ Jesus. I urge you on behalf of my child Onesimus, whose father I have become in my imprisonment, who was once useless to you but is now useful to both you and me. I am sending him, that is, my own heart, back to you. I should have liked to retain him for myself, so that he might serve me on your behalf in my imprisonment for the gospel, but I did not want to do anything without your consent, so that the good you do might not be forced but voluntary. Perhaps this is why he was away from you for a while, that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave but more than a slave, a brother, beloved especially to me, but even more so to you, as a man and in the Lord. So if you regard me as a partner, Welcome him as you would me. And if he has done you any injustice or owes you anything, charge it to me. I, 
Paul, write this in my own hand I will pay. May I not tell you that you owe me your very self? Yes, brother, may I profit from you in the Lord? Refresh my heart in Christ. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm Psalms chapter 146 verse 7 to 10 Let our response be, Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob. The Lord secures justice for the oppressed, gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets captives free. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord raises up those who were bowed down. The Lord loves the just. The Lord protects strangers. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob. The fatherless and the widow he sustains, but the way of the wicked he thwarts. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, through all generations. Alleluia. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob. Gospel Reading A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Luke chapter 17 verse 20 to 25 Asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, Jesus said in reply, The coming of the kingdom of God cannot be observed, and no one will announce, Look, here it is, or, there it is. For behold, the kingdom of God is among you. Then he said to his disciples, The days will come when you will long to see one of the days of the Son of Man, but you will not see it. There will be those who will say to you, Look, there he is, or look, here he is. Do not go off, do not run in pursuit. For just as lightning flashes and lights up the sky from one side to the other, so will the Son of Man be in his day. But first he must suffer greatly and be rejected by this generation. The Gospel of the Lord Before we proceed with the video, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Also, please hit the notification bell, so you won't miss out when we release new videos. Feel free to share your comments, suggestions, and reflections at the comments section down below. Thank you and God bless. Now, let's proceed with the video. The Reflection on Today's Gospel Today's Gospel gives us the discussion between Jesus and the Pharisees on the coming of the Kingdom. The Gospel today and that of the following days deal with the coming of the end of time. The Kingdom is among you. Asked when the Kingdom of God was to come? Jesus answered the coming of the Kingdom of God does not come with observation and there will be no one to say, Look, it is here. Look, it is there. For look, the kingdom of God is within you. The Pharisees thought that the kingdom could come only after people would have reached the perfect observance of the law of God. For them, the coming of the kingdom would be the reward from God for the good behavior of the people, and the Messiah would have come in a very solemn way as a king, to be received by his people. Jesus says the contrary. The coming of the kingdom cannot be observed as the coming of an earthly king is observed. For Jesus, the kingdom of God has already come. It is already among us, independently of our effort or merit. Jesus sees things in a different way. He has another way of reading life. He prefers the Samaritan who lives with gratitude to the nine who think that they merit the good that they receive from God. the signs to recognize the coming of the Son of Man. A time will come when you will long to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and will not see it. They will say to you, Look it is there. Or look, it is here. Make no move, and do not set off in pursuit. For as the lightning flashing from one part of heaven lights up the other, so will be the Son of Man when his day comes. In this affirmation, from there are elements taken from apocalyptic visions of history quite common in the first centuries after Jesus. An apocalyptic vision of history has certain distinguishing characteristics. 
Certainly, in time of great persecution and oppression the poor have the impression that God loses control of history. They feel lost, without a horizon and without any hope of liberation. In those moments of apparent absence of God, prophecy assumes the form of apocalypse. The apocalyptic vision seeks to enlighten the desperate situation with the light of faith in order to help people not lose hope and continue to have courage. To show that God does not lose control of history, they describe the different stages of the realization of the project of God throughout history. Begun in a particular significant moment in the past, this project of God advances, stage after stage, through the situations lived by the poor, until the final victory is obtained at the end of history. In this way, the apocalyptic places the present moment like a stage which has already been foreseen in the overall project of God. Generally, the last stage, before the coming of the end, is represented as a moment of suffering and crisis, which many try to profit from by deceiving people. They will tell you look it is here, or look it is there, but do not move, do not follow them. Because like lightning flashing from one part of heaven lights up the other, so will be the Son of Man when his day comes. Having the eyes of faith which Jesus communicates, the poor can perceive that the kingdom is already among them, like lightning, without any doubt. The coming of the kingdom brings with it its own evidence and does not depend on the forecast or prediction of others. By the cross up to the glory. But first he is destined to suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. Always the same warning the cross, scandal for the Jews and foolishness for the Greek, but for us the expression of the wisdom and the power of God. The path toward the glory passes through the cross. The life of Jesus is our canon. It is the canonical norm for all of us. Jesus said, the kingdom is in your midst. Have you already found some sign of the kingdom in your life, in the life of your nation or in the life of your community? The cross in our life how do you consider or see suffering? What do you do about it? He keeps faith forever, gives justice to the oppressed, gives food to the hungry. Yahweh sets prisoners free, 